Hey everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another part of Code Realize Guardian of Birth. This is part two. We are beginning chapter one now. The first part was the introduction. I had a dream. Yes, a dream. A dream about long ago. When I awoke, father was gone. I still have a father. I must wait for him. I have no other memories, and I don't even know who or what I am. But this doesn't sadden me. He had left a note for me at the mansion. It had a number of rules written on it. Never leave this mansion. I will come back for you, I promise. Lastly, it said this. You must never break these rules, no matter what. If you do, nothing but misfortune will come, because you are a monster. A terrible father. But I... I broke those rules. That's what caused this to happen. People chased me and called me a monster. I even brought misfortune down upon those who have accepted me and tried to love me. And since then, I have kept myself shut in that room for a long, long time. Because I am a monster. Until the day I die, I must sit right there and wait for Father to return. That is what I believed. The sound of birds chirping slowly raises me from my dream into consciousness. I feel a gentle breeze blowing. I'm not in that room anymore, that comforting yet lonely cradle. It comes back to me. Lupin took me away. I open my eyes to see a field of grass stretching as far as the eyes can see. Huh? Ah, you're finally awake. Why do you look so stunned? I see. It's because I'm too handsome to be believed. I get that a lot. Every time I look in the mirror, in fact. Oh my! Who is that dashing young man on the other side of the glass? All the time. Uh, it's not that. Hmm. I suppose humor isn't your thing. Why do you look so surprised, then? Don't tell me you forgot about yesterday. I woke up. And you were right in my face. It was something of a shock. You were too close. You are dressed differently, too. That was a little unexpected. You look like a different person. <laughs> Great! I wanted you to be surprised. You did? Why? Isn't it obvious? I needed to see some expression on your face, other than sad or blank. And why is that? We're going to be in each other's company for quite some time. It's important that we get to know one another better. What do you mean? You're full of questions, aren't you? It's because... Well, why don't we have something to eat first? Just a nibble. Lupin lays a cloth down over the grass and places a basket on it. This was meant to be last night's supper, so it's cold now, but anything's good if you're hungry enough. Isn't that right? Lupin places a sunny-side-up egg on a piece of toast and hands it to me. What's wrong? Aren't you hungry? I haven't shared a meal with another person in a while. This is all so new. Ah, I see. You've been living alone all this time. It's just an egg on toast, for heaven's sake. There's no need for table manners, so eat up. It tastes great. He takes a bite of his toast and looks over at me. He tilts his head as if noticing something for the first time. Oh, I never asked. Can you eat? After all, with the poison and everything. Yes, I can eat. I bring the toast up to my mouth and take a bite. Chew, swallow. That's good to know. Does it melt in your mouth? I shrug. It starts to become mushy right away. Mushy, eh? But I can taste it, and this, it's very good. I feel the flavor spread through my mouth. Well, that's good to hear. One of our group, Impy, is very much in the cooking. He makes his own bread from scratch. Supposedly, he adds his own hidden flavors. 
After one bite, I couldn't stop. I had forgotten what it was like to eat for so long, and delicious food has a way of bringing happiness. I take it you like it, Cardia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't talk with your mouthful. I swallow my current mouthful and ask again. How do you know my name? You are my mission. I make sure to study up on the targets of my heists. Study up? How did you find out about me? I happened to procure some confidential materials from the British government. Procure? Well, steal, if you want to be precise. There's nothing I can't steal, money, jewels, or information. Why did the government have information about me in secret files? This is just one of many questions I have, but I need to know about this man. So, you're really a thief? If you're going to use that word, I must ask that you say amazing first. An amazing thief. Exactly. Arsene Lupin, the master thief and robber supreme. I have plans for my name to go down in history. I wonder what the difference is between a thief and a robber. Isn't stealing bad? Hmm. Well, in general, yes, but I am a thief with a heart of justice, so it's not a problem. Thief and justice seems to be a contradiction. A handsome man is always riddled with some sort of co contradiction, don't you know? His answer doesn't really make sense to me, but I nod and turn my attention back to my food. Sitting here in the warm sunlight, the meal becomes entrancing. The taste of the egg with Lupin's cheery voice is somehow very soothing. Once I collect my thoughts, I take a better look at Lupin as he eats his egg on toast. I have another question. How am I so handsome? That's a mystery that not even I can solve. That's the second time we've had this conversation. This man, it's amazing how much confidence he has. That's not it. Those men, the ones from yesterday, where were they trying to take me? Huh. One moment. All right. It's too much to take in all at once, so I'll try to keep it simple. First, those men were after the Horologium. Horologium? Lupin becomes very serious. It's a source of unlimited energy, a heart that beats forever. That's what the Horologium is. This gem is completely impossible to create using modern technology, but the secret file said that one man succeeded. The process he used to do so is unknown, and the man buried the gem within the body of his own daughter. His daughter? You mean... That would be you, Cardia. I don't know anything about my father. Do you know him, Lupin? I stare at him in surprise, and he looks back at me with some surprise as well. Of course I do. Anyone who lives in Britain, no, anyone in the civilized world knows about him. What's more important is, why don't you know about him? He is your father. I... I can only remember two years of my life. Two years? Yes, I woke up in that mansion two years ago. All I knew was that I had to wait there. The father would come for me. And yet, I broke the rules that he laid down for me once in the past. I still regret it. Lupin looks at me questioningly, and I speak up again. Even though I don't remember much, I do know some things. I read the books that were in the mansion, but... I see. So you know nothing of the outside world. You have knowledge, but no life experience. I was waiting for Father all that time. He's the only thing I have. Please, Lupin, I want to know more about my father. He looks at me for a while, then nods. All right. I'll give you a brief overview. You'll need to know this to move forward anyway. First of all, your father is a scientist named Isaac Beckford. Does that sound familiar? I shake my head. He's a scientist who has changed the course of history. He has been called the modern-day Prometheus. Prometheus? In Greek myth, he brought fire to humanity. Isaac has had that much of an impact on the revolution of modern society. 
Revolution of Society. I think I read about that in a book. Was it called Neo Steam Engine? Oh, so you know of it. That invention led to a massive expansion of Britain's industrial and military power. Isaac became Britain's military technology adviser and developed a number of powerful new weapons, as well as Steel London, but he never saw the completion of Steel London. He simply disappeared one day, after appointing a successor to his position. This all seems like a story about a faraway land, and doesn't sound real. That man is really my father? Yes, according to the information I was able to find, that is. Do you remember anything about him? I shake my head. Lupin seems a little disappointed, but sighs. I see. Anyway, those men from the British forces wanted to get their hands on your Orogion, doubtlessly for bad reasons. What's behind all of this is Isaac's will. My father's will? That is when a certain dashing gentleman thief decided to snatch you away from the hands of your captors. All this information is flooding into my head, and I feel a little dizzy. I must look very serious, because Lupin smiles, as if to lighten the mood. I'm sure all this is very hard to wrap your head around. I'll tell you whenever you want, so just take it in little by little. Okay, I'll do that. Now it's my turn to ask questions. I'll answer what I can. About the horologium, is it true? Do you really have it inside your body? Is it your heart? I nod. It's true. There is a gem embedded in my body. I start to undo my clothing to show him. Huh? Wh what are you doing? This is the horologium, isn't it? He looks surprised for a moment. But Lupin's expression turns serious as he looks at my chest. A strange gem, it gleams on my chest like a beating heart. A glowing blue crest spreads across my chest, with the gem in the center. That looks like several gems, not one gem. The horologium is shaped like a flower. A large blue gem, shaped like a rose, spreads across my chest, piercing my skin in places. I have no idea what effect this stone has on my body, but I have to consider that the poison in my body has something to do with this gem. I don't know anything about this. Other people don't have it, only me. What is it? I want to know, too. Uh, all right. I'll tell you everything I know, but before I do, I need you to do something. What's that? Please, put your clothes back on. Why? Why? I mean, it's hardly ladylike etiquette. Lupin turns away. Etiquette. I've read about that in the mansion's books. Etiquette is of the utmost importance in how men and women interact. I see, so having my shirt off is improper. Okay. I put my clothing back on and sit up. Is this better? Much, thank you. You're lucky I'm a gentleman. If I wasn't, you don't know what might have happened. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm not mad. Not having a memory is one thing, but having no common sense is quite another. Lupin inhales sharply, then turns to me with something of a puzzled expression. I've been wondering this whole time why you haven't asked me what's going to happen to you now. Is that something I should ask you? You don't have to, but I did capture you. Aren't people usually curious about what their captors plan to do with them? I think for a moment. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? <laughs> You're an odd one, mademoiselle. A thief with a heart of justice is somewhat odd, too. <laughs> That's true. Well, seeing as we are both oddities, we may get along pretty well. That makes things easier. My headquarters are in London, so we'll be heading there soon. London? Yes, Steel London. You mentioned that before. What is Steel London? You honestly don't know? My, my, you really are sheltered. I told you, I never left the mansion. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't making fun of you. London is a city of steam, with something of an ill reputation. 
A city of steam? I can't imagine such a thing. That's all right. You'll know it when you see it. You've never been there before, so you're in for a surprise. I have a question. Certainly. Ask me anything. I'll answer whatever you want. Why did you want to capture me? Are you after the horologium, too? I thought you would be a clue to discovering Isaac's plan. I'm really searching for Isaac. He disappeared years ago, so most would assume that he's long dead. However, he's still working from the shadows, and is up to no good. I have good reason to believe this. So my goals are to stop whatever plans he has set in motion. I thought that you, being his daughter, would have some important information for me. I suppose I was off the mark there. My father's plans. I have no doubt that you'll be important in reaching Isaac. I have a good sense for this sort of thing. I know I ended up kidnapping you from the military, but could I have your cooperation in this matter? Hmm. I'm sorry. I can't do that. Well, I didn't think it would be as easy as that. May I ask why you don't want to help me? What happens to me doesn't matter. But I don't want to let my father down by breaking the rules he set for me. Lupin looks at me questioningly. I was told to stay in that mansion and wait for father to return. I hurt people. That's why I need to be kept away from everyone. This poison, it hurts and kills anything it touches. That's why I must stay here. That is what my father said in his note. He commanded you to live your entire life alone? Ha! A man like that has no right to be a father. Don't you listen to him. But... And another thing, Cardia. Don't ever say you don't care what happens to you. No one's more important to you than yourself. Uh. If you want to find your father, you should go looking for him. How would I do that? London is a place of information. There is no better place to begin learning about someone than there. If you stay in that mansion, the military will just come for you again, and they won't be as easily stopped next time. Those men... They feared me, and called me a monster. Lupin is much better than those men. I haven't known him for long, but I can tell. And London has tons of famous doctors who treat the rich, so maybe they can do something about that poison. I didn't expect to hear that. You think they can make it go away? I'll make sure it happens. I promised you I'd make your dream come true, remember? But I'm going to need your cooperation. You'll have to stay by my side for a while. That's the trade-off. Lupin extends his hand to me. I look down at my own hand, then up into Lupin's eyes. They glitter in the sunlight. I will take his hand. I... I nod hesitantly and take his hand. Excellent! The deal is sealed! I feel his strong grip through my gloves. When I see his smiling face, I feel the warmth in my chest, like a wind blowing into my heart. Now that we're settled, we just need to wait for him. For who? You'd better watch out. He's got a weakness for cute girls like you. I'm cute? Lupin smirks, then bows deeply. Of course, milady. Once we arrive in London, your beauty will draw the attention of many a man. You must beware of those sweet temptations, mademoiselle. Lupin's voice is both serious and formal. I nod meekly in reply. I was joking! You're supposed to laugh! I hear the sound of machinery from afar. Maybe those soldiers from last night have found us after all. I stiffen up. Lupin pats me lightly on the shoulder. Don't worry, he's with my group. He's just about as annoying as the British soldiers, though. Group? I wonder if whoever is approaching is the same person Lupin had mentioned before. I turn and see the machine draw closer, spewing black smoke and roaring. I remember it from last night, a metal box on wheels, a self-propelled machine. It was called an automobile. A horseless carriage is probably the most fitting description. It's so fast. 
It screeches loudly and comes to a stop in front of me. Lupin! Hey, you're alive! A man covered in soot and wearing goggles sits in a seat atop the machine. Sorry I'm late. My beloved car wouldn't listen to me. Wait, who's the cutie? Aha! You decided against stealing the treasure and went to pick up girls last night. Introduce me, you bastard! Dolt! The cutie is the treasure! Say what? The man gets up to leave his seat. Fire bursts out from the machine, and a cloud of smoke surrounds us. Lupin quickly jumps up in front of me to shield me with his body. When the blast subsides, I peek around Lupin to look at the newcomer. Ah! The engine's done it again! Wait just two minutes, cutie. Your prince will be right there to enact a romantic first encounter. But we've already had a first encounter. I love you! The man shouts in response for some reason, before diving underneath his vehicle. Gah! I knew this pipe was the problem. I want to get a new one, but my money's tight. All right, good girl. Good, good, good. A short time later. Done. All better. The machine releases another huge puff of smoke as he taps it with his wrench. <laughs> Sorry about that. She's an unruly one, but she's in tip-top shape once again. <coughs> hey, Impy, is this thing really going to get us to London? How rude. If this genius engineer says so, then it's got to be true. He stands in the smoke and looks at me. Ah, nice to meet you, cutie. It is I, your very own prince, astride a white horse. He raised his goggles and smiles at me with his soot-covered face. Don't mind him. He's not a bad guy. He's just a scatterbrained tinkerer. Excuse me, that's distinguished engineer and great inventor, and amazingly good-looking man who knows what's what. Most importantly, a man who will one day land on the moon. In B. Barbicane, ready, willing, and available. Nice to meet you. I'm Cardia. It's nice to meet you. Whoa! Now that I get a closer look at you, you are ridiculously cute. I could swear Venus de Milo escaped from a painting. Venus de Milo is a sculpture. You can't even engineer a proper pickup line. Oh, just call me Impy, Miss Cardia. As he's saying this, he gives me a good long stare. Well, you are a special one. If you desire full service love maintenance, I can provide it. Let me give you the tune-up of a lifetime. I'm not sure how to deal with him. As Impy wipes his grimy face with a rag, Lupin hits him in the face with a punch. Ow! What was that for, Lupin? Enough chit-chat. Let's get going. Those troops aren't idiots. We shouldn't stay here for too long. All right, all right. You're a better speaker with your fist as usual. That's not going to get you any girls, you know. I only use my fist to speak with people at your level. Oh, good. I guess I don't need to worry since there's nobody else at my level. Yes, you are on a level all your own. Impy is cheerful, while Lupin sounds annoyed. It's almost as if they're having different conversations. I'm turning the engine on. Uh, <laughs> not, it's not starting up. The machine roars to life and spews another cloud around us. Whoa, is she leaking steam again? Come on, darling, you can do it. What can I say? There are a lot of strange people in the world. After this rough start, the automobile runs smoothly for a while as we ride. As we go along, Lupin explains to Impy our situation and what has happened to us. Hmm, so if I'm hearing this right, Lupin, then you set yourself up as the hero to this poor soul. I'm so jealous! Trade with me, man! Is that all you heard from this? There was a lot more that you should have been surprised by. The conversations between Lupin and Impy always seem to go this way. 
I could tell that they got along quite well. From time to time the car screeches and releases a cloud of steam. It seems that this machine runs on steam power. The books in the mansion describe steam engines, and the diagrams of them always include a way to vent waste steam. But this automobile doesn't have one. As Impey explained, the Neo steam engine invented by my father allows that energy to be stored without releasing it. That meant that engines could keep steam without the tedious task of constantly stoking a fire and burning coals. That's as much as I understood from Impey's description. It all seems frightfully complicated. Still, Impey's endless chatter and Lupin's arguing serve to lift my spirits. We pass through the fields, towns, and forests as the automobile runs on and on. Although it lets out some steam from time to time, it never breaks down again. According to Lupin, it's something of a miracle that it runs so smoothly. Impey's talk continues like a river, keeping up a stream of conversation. Lupin chimes in occasionally, but I catch him nodding off once or twice. We drove for a long time, but I was never bored during the trip. The sun is now high in the sky. We finish lunch and ride for a few more hours. Lupin, who had been staring into the distance from the passenger seat, suddenly stretches. <sighs> it's coming up. What is? Once we climb the hill, you'll get your first glance of Steel London. A short while later, just as Lupin said, London appears in all its glory. The city that sprawls ahead of us is nothing short of a metropolis. It's far larger than any city that the books I read spoke of, larger than I could have imagined. It's amazing. Any words used to describe it fall short. A city of steel protected not only by a great wall, but by a ring of turrets. That's London. Isn't it fantastic, Miss Guardia? Even greater surprises await you inside. It has a fully functioning sewer system, and, thanks to the gas lamps everywhere, it's bright as noon even in the darkest night. The high-class districts have airship mooring posts everywhere, sticking up from the rooftops like trees in a forest. This is London? How did such a huge city come to exist? It wasn't this way until quite recently. It's thanks to Her Majesty Queen Victoria that the city has grown as it has. Don't get us wrong, it started out pretty big, but in only five short years it became the massive place it is today. The Queen was probably in a rush to showcase Britain's power by transforming her capital into a massive fortified city. Britain has many enemies on the continent. Taking such obvious postures like this has likely prevented a war across Europe. I continue to look at the great city as I listen to Impey and Lupin. As you can see, a wall divides the city into two regions. The mess of towns, forests, and factories. Outside is known as Outer London. Midtown is where London's steam engines are produced. There are some poorer areas, and the rich have vacation homes outside. Beyond the wall, in the center of the city, is central London. That's where politicians, the rich, the powerful, and nobles reside. We live in the forest area of Greater London. We're basically borrowing some space from a certain aristocrat. An aristocrat? I'll introduce you to him later, Cardia. For now, please, wait here with Impey. Lupin turns his back on us and gathers his hat and cloak to leave. What's the matter, Lupin? I'm going to scout the area. You're going scouting? Whatever for? There are teams of inspectors along the wall. I'm going to check them out. It's possible they may be looking for Cardia. You can see the wall from here? Remember this, Cardia. It takes good eyes to be a good thief. To be a good thief? How many times have you trotted that old chestnut out? You keep an eye on Lupin, Miss Cardia. He'll lecture you to death if you let him. That's because you refuse to stop being stupid. I'll be back in an hour or so. Just stay alert and be careful. Watcha. See you later. Lupin waves to us and leaves. Alone at last, Miss Cardia. I nod, watching Lupin's receding back, getting smaller in the distance. For some reason, I suddenly feel lonely.
Why don't we discuss something interesting, like the newest model steam engines that were on display at the London World Expo? It achieved 700 horsepower using four 52-inch cylinder cylinders. Isn't that incredible? The design is also light and compact. The science is so beautiful, right? Impy suddenly reaches out, as if to stroke my cheek with his hand. I flinch back. If you touch my skin, you'll melt. Oh, that's right. Y you're so beautiful, I forgot. It's true what they say. All the greatest roses have the sharpest thorns. Impy, there's something I'd like you to tell me. What kind of person is Lupin? You want to know about Lupin? What about me? Why don't I tell you about my hobbies? I don't understand. Lupin saved me. I don't know why. That's why I'd like to know. I'm impressed that you could blow me off so casually. That's great, Cardia. I can get into this frigid beauty thing. <sighs> hey, I'm kidding. I'll tell you. Those cold eyes of yours will make me cry. Stop looking at me like that. Lupin didn't say anything. I suppose he didn't want to confuse you by telling you everything all at once. All right, as a gift to commemorate our new friendship, allow me to enlighten you. That man is more or less a hero. Is that so? Yeah, he's too embarrassed to admit it himself. Isaac created a special task force known as Twilight. Someone else runs it now. You were captured by a British army squad, but it was supposed to have been soldiers from Twilight on that mission. But the plans got changed somewhere, and those guys came instead. That's good for us, because Twilight has the elite forces. If he'd had to rescue you from Twilight Squad, we may have been in some real danger. We got lucky, that's all. According to Lupin, Twilight is planning some kind of massive terrorist act. And the last step in executing that plan is getting their hands on that gem in your chest. The Orologium, isn't it? This stone? I raise my hands to my chest protectively. It's all just hearsay, but once Lupin heard about that, he decided to do whatever he can to stop it. That's why he's looking for Isaac, the man behind their whole operation, and why he saved you. See? Isn't that heroic? Even for a thief! I see. Even for a thief, he makes it sound like thieves are normally heroic. <laughs> Lupin himself said that he saved me because he was a thief with a heart of justice. Just knowing all this makes me very happy. So, Lupin's not a bad man. Hey now! Did you think I was evil? I turn, startled, to see Lupin behind me. It sounds like you told her everything. Well, that's the long and short of it. It was probably someone with power in the government who gave the order to abduct you. Of course, government official or not, I have no intention of giving you up. I'm sorry to involve you in this. Truly, I am. I shake my head at Lupin's words. I can't find the right words to say it, but meeting you, I think it was a good thing. I see. That's good. Um, I'm sitting right here. Oh, and Lupin? Again! Ignoring me! I want to know about my father, too. There's so much I need to ask him. Why was I left alone in that mansion? Why I have no memories, if he can make this poison go away? Why did he make me a monster? I need to ask him face to face. Then our goals align. Let's make our partnership official. Lupin holds out his right hand. The second handshake. I shake his hand without hesitation. Partners, right? Put her there, Miss Cardia. Impy firmly grasps my other hand. His smile is the brightest I've ever seen. All right, we're going to cut it there because I think this is running a little bit long. Hope to see you in my future videos. I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show your support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.